Jeremy White podcast. Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Available wherever you get your podcasts. The Jeremy White podcast. With Boostan. For the best Lebanese cuisine in Montreal, it's got to be Boostan. Visit boostan.ca. And loudtracks.com. Helping fans connect to their favorite artists. 100% high quality, officially licensed band merchandise that supports the artists you love. Visit our official band and merch store at loudtracks.com watch the jeremy white podcast exclusively on youtube joining me this afternoon very excited to talk to this guy you know i mean he's played on some massive hits that you've definitely heard maybe you've even seen him on stage who knows i mean uh you know we can talk about that uh welcome to the show so how do you say your last name properly oh man it's been a bane of my existence <laughs> <laughs> right. i've 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 toured with so many. I was in a band from Toronto, and I, and I was I was doing the back and forth every month, and every show they would mess up my last name. So my last name is Ryu, but uh, you can just call me PL for short. All right, well PL Ryu, uh, as we say in Montreal, bonjour, comment ça va? Yeah, bonjour. Happy to yeah. talk to you. Yeah, very stoked to talk to you, man. You know, I was just looking at your discography and looking back at some of the hits that you played on. For, first of all, you know, how does a kid from, you know, from Montreal become, you know, one of the most in-demand session players? <laughs> it's such a, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a cross between luck and just being relentless, I think. Yeah. Uh, I was working at this studio uh, in, in Montreal and just like I had, you know, no business. I worked like just making uh producing records at, at the time I, I knew nothing I didn't even know what an EQ was right. but anyways I was there and uh this guy from his name is Giorgio Kleinford he's he's from Amsterdam and at the time he was Akon's production partner mm. he's now David Guetta's production partner he came into the studio he needed a studio and I just camped in the studio 24 7 just like trying to cross his path maybe say hello and stuff and mm. at one point I said like uh you know I hear a lot of guitar in your music. If you want to, um, if 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 you want to give me a shot, you know I'm here. And he did. And then we exchanged numbers. And you know I've done that with 10 million people in my life. But he actually called me back, and he wow. kept on calling. And then that got me. That got my foot in the door. So listening to a lot of that music, you know, I was just talking to David Guetta a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about how a lot of music today is. You know, everything old is new again. So yeah. you listen to The Weeknd, you listen to Dua Lipa, you know, everybody's going back to the 80s. And, you know, you listen to a song like Let's Love and, you know, the, the, the clean guitar tones on those on those records and stuff. You know, talk to me about the approach you have when it comes to recording these guitar parts and, you know, arranging these things, because finding a place for a guitar in an EDM song Dude, <laughs> it's, not it's so easy. funny. <laughs> it's so funny you said that. I was in I was in Amsterdam uh, right after Titanium, right after we we, we did that song, because there's a big uh, uh, festival called AED uh, Amsterdam Dance Event. Right. ADE, sorry. Uh, and I was in studio, and there was a bunch of people, and there's this guy. He was also a guitar player, and he's like, you know, I'm a guitar player, but. Um, you know, I do EDM and it's, it sucks because there's no guitar as an EDM. And to me, I saw that as a huge opportunity, right? Like not, not as a, not, not as a, a problem. So how do I, I, I think that's, that's the biggest challenge, but also like the fact that I, I come from, um, I, I don't know, come, like from a live background, I, I think I know where the guitar fits in a song. And I think that's yeah. why these, uh, these guys, you know, work with me in the studio and stuff. And I got to give it, I got to give it up for, you know, all the chic type guitar playing. Cause that's really, I feel what, what, what brought it back when, when he, um, he came out with uh, the Daft Punk song. Yeah. Um, you know, you listen to get lucky and it's got that Nile Rodgers, yeah. you know, funk to it. And so, I mean, my approach for that is like, you know, with EDM and I love, by the way, Jeremy, I've listened to like, uh, your, your your podcast and ev- your interviews and you get really granular with music making and I, I really appreciate that stuff. so it's like <laughs> I like that I'm gonna go into like more detail yeah uh, dude, I want all the details no wait let me go back though so are you the guitar player playing titanium yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I dude, that's what got my foot in the door that's insane <laughs> 
Thank I you. didn't know that. Wow, dude, that's incredible. Okay, so talk to me about titanium then, because that's where I want to start. Holy shit. So that guitar lick is, I think, it's in the top five most iconic guitar licks of the 2010s. Because as soon as you hear that, that first note, you know what song it is. And so talk to me about how that riff happened. How, so that was this, that was the first like song that, that, you was, that, 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 that uh, yeah, it, yeah, that's what got, that's what essentially changed my life. Okay. Because, so I want to uh, know how, how did this life changing <laughs> freaking guitar riff happen? Because that is incredible. So the, the guy that I met in the studio, yeah, uh, at the beginning of, of the interview, so he, um, he called me and David Guetta was with him and he was on the line and he was like, so, and the, the thing I love about Guetta is that he's extremely cultured when it comes to music. Like, you know, being a DJ, like, yeah. like you, you play music every day, you, you listen to like every single piece of music. So, and his approach is always to kind of like reinvent something. So he wanted yeah. to reinvent the sting sort of police classic, you know, type type sound but for EDM and um so they said can you do you think you can like kind of bridge those two worlds and so I gave it a shot you know and I I I I, I, I played the riff and stuff and I called back uh Giorgio my friend the producer and he's like ah you know what it's not gonna cut it I'm like really why not and he's like it's not tight it's not tight enough what and, you know I come from a live music background and it's like that's I, offensive I, I'm, I'm super I know what it is to play in pocket i know it's, it's so i'm like yeah right so i went back and so he said yeah i think we're gonna just like you know play on keyboard or something so i went back to to the studio and i literally and that was my first kind of edm uh kind of foot in the door it's yeah. like edited every single note like perfectly you know so and they took your time. performance and put it on the grid took every single note and like quantize the damn thing and just piece it together into like a take. Yeah, it's like I was hearing your your interview the other day when you were talking about Mutt Lang, and mm -hmm. I, I kind of I you know is that that type of like super precise like uh, yeah. editing. And then I sent it back, and they were like, "Okay, it's perfect. That's exactly what we want." And then I <laughs> learned like, okay, like the the EDM world and like the R and B world or the urban world, and it's 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 just yeah yeah. Completely different. You've got feel and then you've got robotic. <laughs> yeah, but all, the, the thing with robotic and the thing that uh, why I think I've been able to, to, to play on so many of these EDM songs is that uh, there's a difference between playing something completely quantized and perfect, mm -hmm. but still keeping the, the organic element uh, or, you know, the sound of, of the guitar, yeah. or the voice or whatever, you know? Well, that's what I mean. You know, it's it's interesting. So that guitar like that you play on Titanium, like that opening riff, the main melody, like, did you write that? Like, did you come up with it like in the studio or was it like already like, was it like the melody that like Sia was singing like on the demo or? No, it was, well, you know, a funny story about that song. Sia wrote the song, but she wasn't the one singing it. Uh, right. It was yeah, wasn't it Mary J. Blige? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, so they they sent me the the. I was like a, a session musician uh, in that session, and I've been a like with with Geta, I've been able to like you know co-write some stuff, but it's it's like in in that team, I'm really like the the the, the guitar guy. Right. So Bottom of the barrel. They've been like super. The thing I love about them is they've been extremely. Um, uh loyal like they mm. called back uh 10 years now we've been working i mean that was li literally the first one that kind of like opened the door but then you know we did so many things together after yeah uh, but now they're like wow dude let's call pl yeah exactly and and i feel blessed because honestly david helped me so much uh like meet writers uh even you know because i live part night well you know not not 2020 because of covid but like yeah. usually i live part-time in la and uh, he helped me getting a visa and uh, get, getting all my shit sorted so he's been like incredibly helpful oh dude that's incredible yeah i yeah, know what it's like an amazing guy and and i learned a lot also like just 
how to produce records, how to like just being around these guys, you know? Well, that's really the best school that you can go to at the end of the day. You know, it's like when you're in the trenches creating with the intention, big pop records, you're not going to get an experience like that anywhere else. Yeah. And, and the thing that's awesome about David is that he, every year he uh, takes people to like, he, owns a bunch of houses like you know yeah. around the world and there's this one like villa in in um ibiza where because he's a resident bj there so anyways yeah. every year he takes people there and like maybe like whatever 10 people mostly writers producers and and uh, you know i i, I was yeah. there too industry folk and and we just write for however long and that year it was unreal because he was also on tour so we were at his house and then we're <laughs> taking the private jet to like Stockholm and then to Poland and to wherever. I don't, you know, we, we did a bunch of cities in Europe, wow. riding on the plane, riding in the hotel room, riding at his house. It was unreal. So yeah, I, that was like my, my boot camp for music, for music production. Dude, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> so yeah, no, it was it was really awesome, and I I, I love the guy. Talk about the guitar sound on uh, Titanium. You know what? How did you, what was your guitar rig like? You know how did you get that sound? What kind of guitar did you use? So I used a uh, I have a Gibson Les Paul. It's not here right now. It's in LA, but um, it's uh, the um, model from uh, the guitar player from Tool. So like the big black. With, oh okay. With, um, I have a bad. Like, it's a super metal Les Paul then. Yeah, like very high output pickups yeah so um, yeah, that, that would be back it off a little bit um and 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 yeah that uh i use this uh here <clears throat> yeah this pedal right here which was uh which is a canadian company oh. and they do a chorus pedal that kind of uh makes the um, the, the 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 you know c CE1 type sound. Okay. Right. And then uh, that sound also has like a very specific kind of eight note delay. And that was like, you know, the, the thing with um, those sounds is that there's almost as much, if not more work post than pre, you know? Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, there's a lot happening in the mix, but it's like, you know, that, that organic sound that you're getting to tape, you know, it's like, it, it starts, it's got to start somewhere. So. You know. But the thing is, I, I love, I'm, I'm a very kind of tactile person. So I love like real things, like real pedals, real ah, like you, sense. You like the physical, you know, feeling, you know, you want to go and t turn the knob as opposed to click yeah. the mouse. I should, I can't explain it, but when I turn the knob, I hear the sound changing better than if it's like with a mouse and th nothing wrong. With, actually, I'd love to be all in the box because you can just, you know, go anywhere, everywhere. I have friends that literally only travel with a laptop and they make music and they make hit records but i don't know i just like the real thing you know i come from a music sort of you know instrument yeah. background. Dude, we're, we're, we're guitar players right so you know, like <laughs> we like to turn the knob you know we're, yeah. we're analog we're, we're set in there in our minds like that you know it's, it's like embedded in us you gotta you gotta go and you know crank up the gain or you know yeah and i see your your shania twain shirt and as like that that was like like that those records like those those that was such a huge influence for for the you know the the way they're perfectly made and you know tailored and produced and it's like yeah it's you know a lot of the stuff that Mutt was doing on those records you know it's like I, I tell people this all the time you listen to the Shania Twain albums you know you go back to the Woman and Me and they completely change the genre and then Mutt says okay let's take it a step further and they do it again on Come On Over. And then on up, they just completely, he just goes completely like, you know, it, it's, I, I related to the Def Leppard discography, what he did on high and dry, organic, really rock, you know, same thing with woman and me, very organic band playing live. Then you go to come on over a little bit more produced like pyromania. And then <laughs> up is like Shania's hysteria where everything just went completely <laughs> programmed, completely digital. Like you listen to those drums and I think they're the most incredible sounding drums ever. You listen to those toms and the snares, like everything's tuned and like, you know, like to the key of the song and you listen to the guitar sounds on up. It's like, 
I really think a lot of producers listened to Shania Twain's Up album and said, holy shit, like we should be doing this. Because after that record came out, everybody's drums were programmed like that. Like it, they changed the face of country, even in, in pop music, you know, the, like everything sounded nicely mixed again. Yeah. Where, like in the late nineties and early two thousands, everybody was still in that, you know, organic kind of like grungy, you know, rough edge nineties sound. And I hated that. I hate that music. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I listen to stuff like, you know, like smashing pumpkins or I listen to like, you know, um, no, um, no doubt even, even, you know, like stuff like that. And I'm just like, Oh, this could have been mixed so much better. Like, why is the hi-hat just like fucking destroying my ears right now? You know, like, I like pleasurable, nicely mixed, compressed sounds because I was just, I grew up listening to Mott Lang records. So I, that makes total sense. And you know what, to be, to be completely honest with you, like I was going to school for music here and uh, there's this great guitar player that plays on it, but I don't know which ones, but I, I know Brent Mason. Brent Mason. Yeah. He's one of the, one of the most uh, legendary session guys in Nashville. Well, so I, part of my schooling was just trying to emulate his, oh. tone, his and even like a, one of my exams were like hot wired. He, he yeah. had this hot wired, like super like hot wired, chicken picking, like, yeah, yeah, technical stuff. He's got that real, you know, like kind of like Nashville twang. But it's like, I really love authenticity so it's like to me like the 90s stuff that was like really soupy and grungy and not mm -hmm. you know not not tuned or, or quantized or anything yeah and like super technical stuff from the 80s or even like early 2000s to me it's like as long as the artist is really authentic in his approach i'm with it it's like i can listen to like uh johnny cash or whatever Wu-Tang Clan and yeah. to me they're, they're they're just as authentic and so as long as the artist is like giving a message that's that's that I believe in yeah I, I, I I'm with it I'm in well that's the thing you know about mine and like everybody that I've talked to that has worked with the man you know it's he's all about he's more about groove than anything else hmm. so you know if you have a guitar lick and it's got that groove to it even if it's not right on the beat it'll be like mine will keep that you know, so, so it's not all robotic. Who do you think these days is like the or like who who, who do you like these days? Like music wise that 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 in the production type uh, range. Production wise, I really well, I mean, come on, you, you can't escape Max Martin. I hear him every day. Have you have you ever had the chance to work with Max? No, uh, no, I have not. Let me mm. think because I've probably because uh, I did work with Katy Perry so and yeah. she, she was like but 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 it wasn't because sometimes my okay okay so yeah so I might have worked because I worked on a Maroon 5 song okay and, and sometimes uh Max Martin is like executive yeah what was the Maroon 5 I never, I never worked sorry what was the Maroon 5 song uh I played on uh Nobody's Love oh okay so oh like I a really, really recent one <laughs> Yeah, that's brand new. That's like, yeah. dude, I do play that every night on the radio. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but no, I, I'd love to, to 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 meet or work with Max Martin. I mean, he's a he's a legend. But no, I've never worked. With him. So, talk about that Maroon Five song because now I'm just hearing it in my head. You know, you listen to the guitar part in there; it's very subtle. Less is more. Mm -hmm. What kind of guitar rig are you using to record something like that? I mean. Um, so it really depends on who I work with. So this song in particular, I worked with uh, these guys, Monsters and Strangers. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to be honest, th the way that I work with, with uh, you know, so some of these, it really depends on the project. So let's say Monsters, Monsters and Strangers. These are guys I know from back in 2014, you know, so we've wor been working together for six years. And, you know, again, they've been extremely loyal and, and super, um, I mean, I've seen them just like kind of go up and up and up and up. Like yeah. they've been like killing it uh, in, in, in the past years. And so what they do is like they're, they're a production slash writing team. So they write a song, they produce it. And sometimes they, they sent me a demo, they send me a demo with um, just like the, their own voice. You know, it's, it wasn't, right. it wasn't. Um, well, it's not going to be Adam Levine, you know, yeah, before, exactly. before they sell it to Maroon 5, they're like, here's, we need to make this track. 
And then, uh, and then I just uh, play, I just send them a bunch of ideas, like just, you know, uh, chord stuff. Uh, so what's my rig like for, for, for guys like, like let's say um, Monsters and Strangers, I'll, I, I'll usually work in Logic. Mm. And I have like chains of, of, of plugins that, I, that are like kind of signature sounds that I use. Mm. And uh, it's mostly like telly uh, into like a clean amp that I that I crunch a bit mm. and and then I I try to really just play in pocket do some some and you know so what I'll do is like I'll I'll divide the song into sections let's say verse pre chorus whatever yeah and then uh, I'll just put an idea in, in, in every section not, not nothing like songwriting or anything because you know it's, it's I'm really like a session player for, for, yeah. for sessions and so it's just like chord stuff ambient stuff uh, I, another really kind of thing that always works, I find, is is you know you double you know some melody parts mm -hmm. with the, the guitar, and sometimes that that makes it in the song. And you know sometimes it's like, and you know I do a bunch of these, and the thing is that you know you send the ideas and then it's sent, <laughs> and then maybe like two years later, whatever you'll hear the song, and I'm, that's happened to me twice where I'm somewhere and I'm like. Wait, that sounds like me. And then I, I Shazam it. I'm like, oh shit, I played I played on this. <laughs> it happened to me twice. And uh, because you know, they they kind of sometimes so many so many people involved in making a song that sometimes you just record it, send it. Yeah. It'll come out two years later and you can kind of forget about it. And it there's so many pieces that you know they, they don't necessarily call me back saying, Oh yeah, by the way, the song's gonna come out. So sometimes right. I don't even know that it's out. Well, let me ask you this. You know, this is a, this is an interesting question that I'm always curious about. When you're in that situation and you record your guitar parts and stuff, how do you get paid as a musician? Do they just give you a flat fee and say, hey, here's your session rate. Give us some guitar parts and that's it. Or once the song comes out, do you earn like a point on the song and you get residual? Yeah. And so, so, well, first of all, there's uh, something called um, performance rights. Right. So as a musician or as a singer or as any, anyone who performed on the song, mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, performance rights, collection societies. And so basically, let's say you play on a really big song and you play the guitar on it or the back vocals, mm -hmm. then you put your name into the their system. And then every time it plays, you'll have like a kind of a royalty. Right. So uh, yeah. So it's, so, so it's, not, it's not a it's, it's not a copyright, mm -hmm. and it's not a master point. It's it's a performance royalty. Yeah. So it's like I get a flat fee because mm -hmm. the song might not come out. Uh, it might well, that's say, it. You know, you got to get paid for your time. Yeah. So it, it, and sometimes you know, let's say you get paid for, the, let's say you get paid for the demo, then you get let's say like a bump if if the song. Be, is, is let's say record um sorry released on a major label sometimes yeah. I work with indie artists so you know it's it's a, it's a lesser budget i would think it's a different rate <laughs> yeah completely yeah. And, and then um and then um when it plays then you get your performance royalties but to be honest i would i would love to play on like every single song on earth so it's like i i don't <laughs> mind uh just being there at the creative level yeah um and i'm i'm never the type of person that's gonna like kind of make it hard for anyone to work with me so it's like uh you know uh, there's some of the, the 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 guys that i work with they 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 get me into the process very early you know right. and sometimes you know sometimes it's it's uh because i i also uh write and produce for for yeah i have a band with uh, my partner yeah and, chilled uh, yeah child 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 child. <laughs> so, so it's child but with three eyes dude so, i thought it was chilled i was like <laughs> wait what i mean it could have been child yeah dude, so, i know if i ever play your songs on the radio i'm gonna hear like another dj say like chilled and i'm like no, <laughs> dude it's child it's child three eyes yeah but you know what it's like um at so i, I at one point everybody's gonna know how to pronounce it because it's gonna be um everywhere <laughs> I mean, I'm so passionate about that project is it's it's really kind of the culmination of like 
everything. It's mm. you know, because I come from a live background. So I, I did a lot of touring prior to becoming a session guy. Yeah. And then I was a session guy. And then I, 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 I became a producer. Mm. So, and, and uh, also I do music for TV and film. I, which, which I love. Like, yeah. You guys I, just have one of your tunes in Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was really just a blessing. Dude. And so cool. child is the thing that kind of bridges everything together. It's like, I have the session, uh, well, the, you know, the recording of whatever uh, drums or whatever, because, you know, I play other, I kind of have my hands on everything in, in, the, in that. Dude, I think as musicians, honestly, at, at, in 20 to 21, we all kind of have our, our hands in all the pots, you know? Yeah. The more versatile you are, I think you're going to get more gigs. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because like, I mean, you know, that I think that's the main difference between Montreal and, and, and let's say LA or, 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 or the States mm -hmm. in general, but LA mostly because LA is such a big city. It's, uh, well, you've got tons of dreamers from all parts of the world just trying to make it in LA, whereas Montreal, you're... But not just dreamers. You have like killers. Like you have guys yeah. and girls that uh, are amazingly talented. And, and the thing in Montreal is that I find... Is, is that you have to kind of have your have your hands in many pies you know it's like oh yeah. i do production and I do it's not lot. what you know it's who you know as well but in in los angeles you can really specialize and and then become like an expert at uh you know something and i i'm of the school of thought that i i i think that you can be really 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 good at many things you know people some people don't don't think that, and especially in the states, they feel mm. a need to like kind of box you into a okay, you're an R and B player, so we're gonna call you for R and B sessions. Yeah, and, we're, and that's why with like Child, like we 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 did this first release, and we had whatever, like you know, we, we used a lot of strings, we and it, there was a lot of like, you know, uh, Sam Cooke influences and stuff. And on Ooh. the second record that's gonna come out uh, early this year, uh, we kind of you know, kept the core, but took it someplace else because we don't want to be like kind of boxed into, you know, just music. Yeah. We're, we're a product of our environment and the, the environment is changing. So we're changing with it. And it's like, I feel that's the biggest difference between Montreal and LA is how specialized people tend to be over there. Hmm. Interesting. That's an interesting point. Yeah, it's it's. That's, that's, that's what I've, you know, the, the, the craziest thing is here. I do, you know, TV stuff and I do production stuff, let's say. Mm -hmm. and when I moved to Los Angeles, I felt, wow, that, that's awesome. Cause LA is like the Mecca of, of all of that, of, of all of that, but <laughs> of, of film. So I was like, well, you know, I'll do sessions for artists and then I'll meet, you know, TV people. And yeah, you'd be composing, <laughs> you know, you could, you, you could have been doing the Mandalorian or something, you know? But uh, it's 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 so it's it's two completely different industries. You could even call it like a, a, a different universe because it doesn't really cross pollinate. Like at, we've we've done like hundreds of, hundreds of, of sessions. I've never met a, a, a TV composer. Actually, the only guy. It's funny wow. bring up the the Mandalorian guy uh, because that's the only composer I know that's dabbled in both. Actually, Trent Reznor. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, and Ludwig uh, Goransson. Wow. He did Red Bone with Childish Gambino. Yeah. yeah. And then he did Mandalorian and, and all kinds of other scores. Which, I mean, he's incredibly talented. I really love his music. I was listening to Tenet last night. He, he composed Tenet. Yeah. Oh, dude, all that stuff is just, it, it's so cool to hear the cross between industrial, like soundtrack, and then like organic kind of like musicality. I love it. Yeah. And it, it really has to, go with the ability of the director it's mm -hmm. like you have to be able to work with somebody that wants to take it there yeah you think there's a snobbery between you know the music side and like the tv or like television like a uh, movie side like to see like a session guitar player for like katie perry and then yes. like, oh, no he wouldn't be able to you know play I, 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 I don't know if it's snobbery but i think that there's definitely i mean it, the prejudice they, they yeah they complete let's if you're seen as something whatever it is yeah you're a producer or you're a session player or whatever people tend to s call you for that and mm -hmm. so you really have to like brand yourself differently and 
it's it's specifically in Los Angeles. Uh, I don't think that that's true, like in 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 other like big music markets like uh, you know Germany or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but but over there, um, and even 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 like you have, I, I'm even considering using different aliases. Just, just, just to have like different branding stuff, so, you know. And- what that wouldn't be a bad thing because I was talking to um, Sophie Simmons, okay, the daughter of Gene Simmons. Okay, what? she had a song with Felix Cartal on Canadian radio. It's called Mine, and she was saying, you know, she's a songwriter in LA. And when she started working with her manager, they just started sending out demos, no name, no headshot, like tied to it at all. They just started sending them out because they. She said, you know, I, I didn't want to be the victim of prejudice. You know, I didn't want people to see my name or like associate me with something that I'm not. And we just started blindly sending out tapes and let the music and let the work do the talking for us. And, you know, it's worked out. So that's not a bad idea. You, you could have like a rock alias. <laughs> you could have a TV yeah. alias. You know, but It's, I really, I didn't know she did that, but I really respect that because yeah. um, I, I have a, a bunch of like producer friends that I met that some of them I met when they had not much or, or, or they had like, you know, you know, a reputation and stuff, but then they really hit it like completely out of the park. Yeah. And, um, and then people, st- you know, people start uh, liking or getting music from them because they see the, the name. And mm-hmm. I, I always you know, I always felt like people that drive their cars or go on their run and hit Spotify or uh, whatever um, way that they, they listen to their music, mm-hmm. they don't know who wrote it. And nope. what, they, they, they just, you, you have to let the music speak. And so the way that, the, the re, the, like the fact that she did that, I think it's uh, commendable. I think it's awesome. Well, it's the same thing with radio. You know, it's like every single song we play on the Beat 92.5 is tested. You know, it's it goes through a testing system, you know, with like core members of the audience and the, do like an auditorium test and everything. So every single song we play on the beat, you know, it's it's tested. So we know that this is what our audience is going to like. So we could play something that we think fits our brand, but then we go to play it for the Jennifer and <laughs> they're like, uh, like, nah, that's going to pass on that. They don't care as long as they get the vibe and they get they can get into it they don't give they don't give a rat's ass who's singing it who's playing on it as long as they can vibe to it and they can jam to it that's all that matters to the general public it really is only like you know the guys like me that i'm like oh shit that's pl playing the guitar lick on that you know like the you know the music guys so i think it's really i i think that'd be not a bad thing for you to just go and do an alias and just start blindly sending things out because who knows and you really only need that one thing to hit and then everybody else is going to be calling you, you know, it's like the David Guetta thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I well, that's again, the, the child thing is, you know, it's not an alias for me because there's two of us. But, you yeah. know, it, it's really just the my the, my partner, uh, Yanni. That's it's his face. You know, it's his. Uh, but it's two of us making the music. Yeah. And it's like it's, it's kind of like a little alias for me because I get to be creative and and express myself through that channel and uh you know it's yeah it, i i feel blessed about that so in 2021 are we gonna see david Guetta featuring child that would be awesome that would be unreal uh i think we're so like completely in two universes that, <laughs> but you know what though um uh because david Guetta has a has a has a you know, a team uh, working with them and they've yeah. been so supportive that I wouldn't be surprised that they would help us out like, yeah. for sure. Cause they've always been in- incredible. And, you know, David is in, 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 in the, in the stage of his career that he's been so successful that he's, he's uh, giving back a lot. I find. And um, he's a good dude, man. He's awesome. Yeah. 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 I have so much respect for him. Well, PL you've, uh, You've said it all, man. You said it all. <laughs> this is uh, this is really cool. So, uh, in uh, 2021, like, what what big radio hits can we expect to hear you on? Any big artists? Any big tunes in the pipeline? Okay, yeah. So, um, tunes in the pipeline. I well, I am working um, 
on the, the next uh, David uh, record, David. Nice. Record, you know? And so, you know, there's definitely songs that you're going to hear on the radio with uh, David and on which I'm going to be playing, uh, doing some stuff with uh, Akon as well. Cool. Uh, and uh, most definitely uh, Child next record coming uh, coming out. Uh, I'm going to say probably end of February, beginning of March. Oh, I the first, the first the first release very soon. So oh, cool. So we'll have to do this again when the uh, when the album's coming out. Bro, uh, I I would love to, and I I really love. Uh, I've I've watched like literally all your interviews. Uh, you know, because 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 I'm I knew sorry to hear that. <laughs> no, because I knew I knew we were gonna talk, and and um, there's something amazing about uh, the 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 way that you're so uh passionate about the 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 very like kind of technical or granular like the way you you ask like uh the all and old guys about back vocals and stuff i i yeah. think that's awesome so um I'm, I'm a big fan so thanks for having me on well that's the thing you know i'm a musician and i'm a music fan so it's like i i don't necessarily i'll ask you know when i interview the mainstream artists you're like hey you know do you like kit cats or smarties or you know what are you watching on netflix <laughs> but then you also got the side of me that also comes from a music standpoint i'm like oh you know what the the these artists get asked the same questions in every city they do an interview with. Like, you know, they could be getting, they could be doing a hundred interviews in a junket in a day and get the same questions. And then I'll come in with like something like, Hey, what kind of keyboard do you use? And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I, I like talking to guys like you, you know, who are kind of behind the scenes and, you know, have a hand in the hit making that don't necessarily get the, uh, the recognition. So it's, it's cool to talk to somebody like you. So. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So we'll do this again. Child, new music coming out very soon. You can hear him on the Beat 92.5 and on all these big hits. You just go look up his discography. He's, you know, you've heard the man. Go support him. <laughs> Get him some, some, uh, some performance royalties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me ask. So are you on like Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff? Or yeah, So you can find me on Instagram. It's my full name. Okay. So. For the French-speaking people, it's Pierre Luc Riou, and Rieu. Pierre Luc Riou. And for the English-speaking people, uh, it's Pierre Luc Riou, I guess R I O U X. Uh, you can find me on there or Facebook, whatever. Nice. And uh, I always appreciate anybody reaching out. That's, that's oh, great. dude, this was great, man. We'll have to do this again. We'll we'll keep in touch. Okay, same. All Thank right, you, yeah. Jeremy. Yeah, thanks a lot for chatting.